Thank you so very much for joining us here today at Church Learn Rock. I know that God has something incredible planned for you throughout this message. If this is your first time tuning into our podcast, let me encourage you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. That's our website. On there, you will find anything and everything you need to know about us. Now, before we jump into this, let me pray that God has a specific word for you. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Or you can turn, actually, probably, um, if you want to turn over to 1 Corinthians 6. I'm going to just give you the one verse that's kind of been our study throughout this series. This series is called Chasing Wisdom. Chasing Wisdom. And, and our, our verse for this whole series comes out of Proverbs 4, 7. Solomon said, getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. This comes from the wisest man who ever lived. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. And he says, and whatever else you do, get good judgment. That's a mouthful. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. And whatever else you do, get good judgment. Get good judgment. Now, we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 in a little while. But so far in this series, the series has kind of revolved around one question. And that is stopping and taking time to ask, is this wise? Is this wise? Not is it right or wrong. Is it the wise thing to do? Given my past history, given my present situation, given my future hopes and dreams, is this wise? Is this the wise thing to do? As we've watched the rioting and protesting and all of the things going on in Baltimore over the last week and New York and and back down in Ferguson when all that was going on and and something in me just wants to say, everybody just... Hit the pause button. Just stop and ask, is this wise? We have problems. We have situations. And I'm I'm talking about the rioters. I'm talking about the police. I'm talking about the politicians. I'm talking about the media. Everybody just stop and say, is this wise? Is this the best way to fix these problems, to deal with this situation? Is this the wise thing to do? Now, today, we're going to sort of isolate this question down to one specific area of our lives, which we've really kind of done anyway. We, we've talked about our wisdom in our finances. we talked about wisdom with our time in the hourglass, that we've only got so much time and we need to make the best of our time. Today, we're going to sort of isolate that down into another area. But first of all, let me, let me ask you, have you noticed when there's something that you want to do that you know you shouldn't do? How we sort of have these little self-conversations and we talk ourselves into doing what we know we don't need to do. You ever have those? Yeah. Yeah, we, we do that. Uh, the truth is your greatest regrets, your greatest looking back, your greatest regrets. Listen, I hate to tell you this, but you were there for them. You were there for them. You were there just before them. You were there in on the planning of them. You were there for the execution of them. And you're here to live with the regrets of them. We can blame whoever we want to blame. But the truth is we were there for the whole thing. Right? How how we do it is we talk ourselves into it by telling ourselves There's nothing wrong with blank. There's nothing wrong with. There's nothing wrong with. There's nothing wrong with. Until suddenly we've done something wrong. Or at the very least, we've done something unwise. Listen to me closely. If you miss everything else I say today, don't miss this. It is a bad idea to assume that if something's not wrong... That automatically means it's right. That's a bad idea. Don't assume that just because something's not wrong, that it's necessarily right. There may not be anything inherently wrong with it in principle or in general, but it may not be right for you. And if it's not right for you, guess what? It's wrong for you. 
She may be just a girl for somebody, but not for you. He may be a great guy for somebody, just not for you. So don't assume that because something isn't wrong, that it's automatically right. And besides that, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called on to live above what's simply right or wrong. We're called on to follow Him and do what is wise. We're called on to be wise and to be led by the Spirit of God, not led by our flesh, our own desires, or our whims. One of the one of the society and the world's favorite sayings is, just follow your heart. Just follow your heart. And I want to scream, no! Whatever you do, don't follow your heart. Why not? Because Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us the human heart is the most deceitful of all things. And it is desperately wicked. So you're telling me that I should follow the most deceitful part of my whole body and the one that is inherently wicked? No. Matthew said, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts. We don't follow our heart. How about follow Christ? How about follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and do what is wise? So we've talked about wisdom in our finances, wisdom with our time. Today I want us to apply this question to our moral decisions concerning relationships, concerning our own sexuality, whether you're a believer or a non-believer. That's not even the issue today. Whether you're straight or gay, whether you're married or unmarried, I want us to look at our lives through the filter of this one question. Not is it right, not is it wrong, but is it the wise thing to do? Given my past history, my present situation, my future hopes and dreams, is this the wise thing to do? All right, here's what we know. Whether you're saved or not, we're not even talking about that right now. I'm just talking about when you look back on your life and you see what you define as a bad moral decision, however you define that, I want us to examine what brought you there. What caused you to make that bad moral decision? So hopefully in the future we can live with less regrets. That's the title of the message today is Living Without Regret. We can hopefully live without these regrets because one thing is for sure. When it comes to bad choices and regrets, we all have them. Do we not? We all have them. We all have situations. We've made bad choices and we have to live with the regrets of that. So first of all, if you're a note taker, you can write this down or hopefully we're going to have it on the screen for you. But First of all, bad moral decisions, however you define bad, bad moral decisions are generally preceded by a series of unwise choices. Bad moral decisions are generally preceded by a series of unwise choices. How did we get there? We got there by, there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with. There's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having lunch with her. I mean, it's just lunch. We work together. What are you telling me? Lunch is wrong? There's nothing wrong with lunch. I eat lunch every day. Lunch is not bad. I remember the pastor used to come over to our house and eat lunch. You're telling me lunch is wrong? It sounds silly, but isn't it silly how we can talk ourselves into things? We can talk ourselves into things when we start following our heart. I mean, I can't help it if I have to work late sometimes. It's my job. And yes, sometimes I confide in her. I mean, she's a good listener. It's cheaper than going to a therapist. You want me to spend $100 an hour talking to a shrink? She understands me. And yeah, she she needed to talk. What was I supposed to do? Just say no? Don't talk to me? I mean, I mean, she's hurting. Her husband treats her bad. Unlike me, he's not thoughtful and kind. 
Maybe this is a friend of yours and you're watching this thing play out and something in you, it just, something doesn't seem right. So you want to say something, but you don't want to say anything. And, and so you finally say, you know, it's my friend and I just don't want to. And so you say something and what's the first thing to come out of there? Hey, Mr. Judgmental, I'm not doing anything wrong. I haven't done anything wrong. And we think, well, you You're right. It's not really wrong. It just seems like there's something not right. Or maybe it's you. We're all good at this one. You just lie to yourself. I mean, it's okay. You you, you lie to everybody else. But long before you started lying to others, you started lying to yourself. Long before you weren't honest with others, long before you weren't transparent and accountable to others, you've been lying to yourself. You're not even honest with you. You're not even transparent with you. You're not even accountable to yourself. And we have a hard time admitting to ourselves what everybody on the outside can already see. That is, you may not technically be doing anything wrong, but there's just something not right. You're not being wise. Can we just get honest this morning? I mean, just, let's just, let's just get honest. If we can't be honest with anybody else, let's be honest with ourselves. Let's stop deceiving our own selves. Bad moral decisions are generally preceded by a series of unwise choices. So we get closer to the edge and closer to the edge and closer to the edge. And somebody says something about it. We fire back. Hey, I haven't done anything wrong. No, but you're getting closer. You're getting closer. Now, listen, living on the edge is fine. Let's say if you're counting calories. And you get a thousand calories a day. I say eat 999. Push the limit. You know, there's no use stopping with 700. You got a thousand of them. Push the limits. Kids, if you've got a curfew at midnight, stay out to 1159. It's okay. No, don't come home at 1030. Push the limits. You got a curfew. But church, when it comes to your, your morality, when it comes to issues of your own sexuality and your own, your own morality, these kind of issues, there are lines that once you cross them, there is no coming back. It's not just a oops. It creates great regret and sometimes tragic circumstances. When it comes to your moral decisions, the wise thing you can do is stay as far away from the edge as possible. Not see how far you can go and how close you can get without actually crossing the line. No, stay away. In these areas, we're called to live beyond what is simply right or wrong. We're called on to live wisely. Because we all have stories we could tell, don't we? We all have regrets of making unwise choices. The Apostle Paul writes to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, he says, Flee from sexual immorality. Flee. That word flee, just in case you don't understand it, let me give you the Greek interpretation. It means run fast. That's what flee means. Run away. And think about it. When it comes to sexual immorality, isn't that what every husband and wife wants their spouse to do? Run away. Don't flirt with the guy at work. Don't be doing that. Run away. Isn't that what every boyfriend and girlfriend wants their partner to do when it comes to this? Run away. Isn't that what every parent wants their son or daughter to do when it comes to their sexual morality? Run away. Don't stay there. So we're sort of hypocritical in that we can see it in everybody else. But when it comes to ourselves, we forget how to flee. We forget how to run away. So Paul says, flee from sexual immorality. Then he says, all other sin. All of, that, that is to say, sexual sin is not like any other sin. It's in a category all by itself. It's like nothing else. Almost any counselor will tell you, anytime somebody comes in, or even a friend, really, and they begin to tell you a story of deep regret and deep sorrow, it almost always has to do with some sort of sexual immorality. 
Paul says, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin is outside the body. It's outside the body. But this sin, sexual sin, when you commit sexual immorality, he said you sin against your own body. You sin against your own body. It's not that it's not forgivable or anything like that. In fact, remember... Remember the, the woman caught in adultery and they drug her before Jesus and said, Stone her. Remember, Jesus forgave her. And He ministered to her. And He loved on her. And then He said, don't do that anymore. Don't do this anymore. He said, you're destroying your own body and your mind and your soul and your future. Flee from it. Run from it. Don't flirt with it. So this is not a forgiveness issue. But I will say this, out of all types of sin, out of all types of bad behavior or shortcomings, this type of sin, this type of behavior seems to be the hardest for us to forgive ourselves for. It just sort of sticks with you. Something about it. You carry it with you. It tends to affect your current relationships. It will affect your future relationships. Your past will affect your future. It just seems to linger longer than other things. So Paul says, flee from it, run from it. And then Paul sort of lifts our heads and our eyes. He lifts our standards to a different level. And he says, honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your bodies. Not, is this wrong? Not, will I get caught? Not, will they get pregnant? Not, will I get this disease? Not, can we get away with it? No, honor God with your bodies. That's the standard that Christ calls us to follow. Not, how close can I go without falling over? Not, how far can I go without it technically being wrong? But be wise. Honor God with your bodies. Treat your bodies the way you would want your spouse to treat theirs. Treat your bodies the way you would want your teenage son or daughter to treat theirs. Flee from sexual immorality the same way that you want others to. Now, you may be saying, but but pastor, it's, it's so hard. I mean, you've taken all the fun out of my life. I may as well just become a monk and join a monastery. You know, it's so hard to do this. No, no, let, let me ask you this. If you choose to honor God with your body and filter all of your decisions through this question, is this wise? Let me ask you this. Ten years from now, or five years from now, or a year from now, do you think you'll have more regrets or less regrets? All right. How do I honor God with my body? Well, our culture, unfortunately, our society is what makes this so hard. Because what our culture does is it baits us. It draws us out and seduces us. And it draws us so close to the line. And then it will turn on you and chastise you when you step over the line. We see it every day. We see advertisements. We see sitcoms. We see movies. We see reality shows that have nothing to do with reality. Right? Craziness. We see, we see in music. Everywhere we look, we're being drawn out closer and closer and closer. This is okay. And that's okay. And look what everybody's doing. And this is the norm. And we're drawn. And then when somebody steps over the line, They're the bad guy. I can't believe they did that. Wow, look what he did. So-and-so left so-and-so. And and they cheated on him with so-and-so. Bruce Jenner wants to be a girl. Wow, I can't believe that. I'm thinking, really? I can't believe it took this long. I mean, I'm serious. Look at the world we're living in. I can't even believe that's news anymore. I mean, this is, this is the world that we live in. I'm not even talking about it in church. I mean, in the world, the world says, you know, I can't believe this. 
So how are we supposed to honor God with our bodies? Three things real quickly and then we wind it up. Number one, filter all of your choices through this question, is this wise? Is this wise? Number two, pre-decide. Don't wait until you're in the moment to decide whether or not I'm going to be moral or whether I'm not. I read something a week or two ago. It was the uh, Duck Dynasty granddaughters. I think her name's Sadie, right? And they were talking to her. She's like 16, 17 years old, 17, I think. And she's got a boyfriend. And they, were, she was, they were talking about sexual purity and things. And they said, you know, how do you do this? You're 17 years old, you, you know, and you've got all of this stuff. And she said, you know, we've talked about this. We made decisions. We don't go. We're never alone in the house without parents there. We've made this decision. We don't, I don't go and hang out in his bedroom. He doesn't come hang out in my bedroom. Not because our parents told us we couldn't, because we decided this is the wise thing to do. It has nothing to do with whether I can or can or somebody told me. It's not about the rules. It's about the wise. I know what I want for my life. I know what I, we know what we want for our future. It's about honoring God with our bodies. We predecide. We don't wait until we're in a situation to try and make a decision. And number three, write it down. Write it down. Studies have consistently shown that you're 20 to 30 times more likely to do something or not do something if you will predecide and write it down. Hold yourself accountable to it. Now, the last argument here is, but pastor, come on, that's fine for you. You live in this little church world. But if you lived out here with the rest of us, you would understand nobody does that. Nobody does that. Everybody does that. You can't expect me to do, everybody does this. Nobody, and you know what, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But let me tell you this. What you've just given me is a statement of fact. You still haven't given me an argument of whether or not you should. Whether it's wise for you to or not. All you've told me is what everybody... You know what? I don't care what everybody else is doing. What I care about is what you're doing. What I'm doing. It doesn't matter. You just told me what everybody's doing. I don't care. Frankly, my dear, it doesn't matter. Whatever The old folks used to say, if everybody jumps off a bridge, are you going to jump off? Right? So that doesn't matter what everybody else is doing or what somebody else is doing. I will tell you this. If you will choose this, and I'm going to close with this. If you will decide to filter all of your decisions through this question, is this the wise thing to do? Not do I want to do it right now. Remember, we said don't give up what you want the most for what you want in the moment. If you'll decide, is this the wise thing to do? And then you'll pre-decide what you will do or will not do, morally, sexually, with your body. Write it down and hold yourself accountable to it. I promise you this. That's one decision you'll never, never, never regret. Amen? Again, thank you so very much for checking out our podcast. If you would like to share what God is doing in your life, maybe you have a prayer request or, or just seeking answers, let me encourage you to go to our Facebook or our Twitter or even email us at pray at org. If you would like to give to our ministries financially, you may easily do so by going to jesusistherock.org and clicking on the giving button at the very right-hand corner of the screen. Have a wonderful day.